right, I have the cover before the lunch slot, so I'll make it brief, but uh, hi everyone, my name is Madhur Behel, I'm an assistant professor in computer science and in systems engineering here at UVA. And my group, we conduct research at the confluence of machine learning and predictive control for cyber physical systems. I work at the UVA Link Lab. Um, this is my first time at Datapalooza. I'm very excited to share a brief reprise on uh, some of the research that is being done in autonomous vehicles in my group. So this is how people drive in the real world, right? There's a cyclist on a freeway, uh, or they will just <laughs> brake check you for no reason. They will cut into your lane without giving an indication. And so the, the main theme of this research is how do we ensure that self-driving cars can deal with these kind of edge cases or unexpected situations that happen all the time. Right, so to set this up, uh, if you were to come up with a recipe for any self-driving car, you'll end up with the following ingredients. You have, to, every car out there, it has to do perception, which means it has to localize itself. Where is it in respect to its environment, in the lane? It has to understand the scene around it, which is called the scene understanding problem of where everybody else is, what are the other cars, pedestrians, cyclists, stop signs, uh, you know, other directions, uh, or even, uh, things that it has never seen before, right? So, so it has to do this perception very, very heavily. It has to then do planning, which is plan locally how it has to travel uh, a collision-free path in the next few seconds. And then we eventually um, have to compute the steering and velocity commands to follow that path safely. So what has been happening in recent years is a lot of this perception planning control pipeline uh, is getting done using deep learning or uh, neural ne machine learning in general. In particular, the perception is very, very heavily reliant on convolution neural networks for object detection. In many cases, such as end-to-end -end learning, you can even map directly pixels to steering angles and control. Right, so, so this is what is happening today, and obviously uh, it's no surprise that a lot of this machine intelligence and deep learning in particular is largely about uh, the training data, right? So what has the car seen before uh, makes it more confident about navigating these situations day to day. And this is, herein lies the big problem of uh, what will happen for when the car encounters a situation that it has never seen before. Uh, how will it plan? How will it execute control? Uh, how will it even, how can we even ensure that it does perception reliably? So to give you some sort of cherry-picked, exaggerated examples, you know, so when a car is faced with this, it will detect this cyclist on the road, but it's actually a sticker behind another car or uh, the, the pedestrian behind another car. Or, or what about this, right? So if you are a neural network, how would you classify this, right? So it's one car or, or multiple cars, how do, we, how do we ensure that we don't uh, misclassify? So I can keep going, here's one of my favorites one. This is a ramen noodle place in Japan. Uh, the logo of this place looks like a do not enter sign, and so you can actually see a self-driving car prototype by Honda. Uh, it's confused because it's looking at that logo of the restaurant and thinks there's a, the street is do not enter, right? So, uh, and much closer to home, uh, this is Tesla's visualization. It's telling you there's a bus next to you too close to you, whereas you are standing in your garage <laughs> next to a washer and dryer, right? So, so you get the idea, I can keep going with these, but the point is how can we ensure a fully autonomous vehicle drives safely in situations that it has never seen before, or these unusual uh, edge cases. And so here is the idea that what we are trying, it's called safety through agility. Uh, if you look at the spectrum of safety of self-driving cars, on one end you have all the automotive manufacturers, they are driving millions and millions of miles. So you hear the Googles and the Teslas claiming they've driven millions of miles. That's a soft way of saying that we've seen a lot of traffic situations. On the other end of the spectrum of safety, you need some kind of major breakthrough between deep learning and formal methods to ensure that under such under certain set, set of uh, inputs, you can uh, lead to bad outputs. And that's still a major challenge. And so what we are doing is somewhere in the middle. We do work on either ends of the spectrum, but uh, safety through agility is the idea that we are teaching autonomous cars to be agile uh, and teach them to l operate at the limits of their agility and control. So if you have two cars, they were both trained on the same traffic data, then what we want to show is the car which has this agile controller, and I'll describe what that is in a bit, is overall more safe, right? So, so the idea is that we are teaching autonomous vehicles to be agile uh, by autonomously racing them against each other. That's the, that's the key hypothesis in, in what the research is talking about. Uh, so how do we do this? How do we autonomously race autonomous cars against each other is going to be the rest of the talk. So here's some inspiration from motorsport racing. If everything seems under control, then you're not going fast enough, right? So this is what sort of inspires us to 
talk about or reason about agility and how it pertains to uh, racing in particular. Uh, and it may seem that safety and racing are very contradictory, and the idea is not that the autonomous car should weave through traffic all the time, uh, but when it encounters an uh, edge situation, and that's a question on its own, uh, it should have the ability to maneuver itself safely to the, towards the shoulder or get, it, uh, get itself out of that situation. And very intuitively also, racing presents these edge cases much more often, right? So here's a little insight. Uh, leading, the last few seconds leading up to an accident always look like racing for all of the time, right? You're driving in close proximity to each other, almost trying to crash, but not quite. So that's what we mean by capturing agile behavior. So the way we do this is also very interesting. We rely both on simulation and some real-world test beds. So here on the left, you see uh, an image from a photorealistic Formula One game. And on the right is the corresponding screenshot from the real race. And you can barely tell them apart. In fact, the game is actually more photorealistic than <laughs> real life itself. Uh, but uh, we use this environment. And uh, this is a busy slide. But we can uh, close the loop within this game itself. So we can drive in simulation. And the simulation is the same sort of game which is used by real Formula One drivers, so very realistic physics as well. So we can drive within the game. We can get annotated data of steering and acceleration from the game itself. We can train our agile controller that I'll describe next. Uh, and then the, we can drive an autonomous car in the game uh, and then race cars against each other autonomously, training them to be agile. So geek out with me for a bit. So here's a complex scene from a Formula One game. We can do lane tracking, vehicle tracking. We can then build a a spatio-temporal map of where every agent in my scene is how, is, how is, how are they spatially connected to me and to each other. So this is a spatial graph. And once we build this graph, we actually get rid of all the Formula One pixels of the scene, because real world traffic doesn't look like Formula One cars. But this graph changes from one frame to the other, and our neural networks are trying to learn how this graph changed. And thereby, they are learning in a given situation how do I need to maneuver in order to prevent a collision. So this is maybe not so impressive as the previous video, but the uh, initial results to show that this is indeed possible in the game. Our network has learned how to use some optical flow and context properties you, and learn the spatial temporal relationship to autonomously drive inside the game. So here's uh, a brief example of how a Formula One driver might overtake. So there are two maneuvers. One is overtaking on the inside, a very common maneuver in F1. The other is sort of overtaking on the outside, which is called the slipstream overtake. So in my lab, we do simulation, but we also build a lot of robots and autonomous hardware. So here you see my student. He's driving a manual car. It's a one-tenth scale race car using a first-person view headset and a steering wheel and some pedals. So as he's driving, you'll see in a bit what he sees while he's driving. So this is his first-person view. It's like playing the game, but with real hardware. So as he's driving, we are generating or gathering all this data about steering and acceleration and LIDAR and cameras, which is what will be fed into the neural network as well. So here you have two cars. One of them is actually an autonomous car, which is programmed to just follow the outer wall of our track in my lab. And here you will see my student. He's trying to overtake the autonomous car, similar to how that Formula One overtaking videos that I showed you. Right. So if you see on the bottom right, he overtakes from his FPV view. And we gather all this data. We tag it. We do our spatiotemporal neural networks that I described. And so the end result is this. We have two cars now. One of them has autonomously learned to overtake the other one. Right. So the car on the inside has learned this maneuver, agile maneuver of overtaking on the inside, or also overtaking uh, on the slipstream, just like we saw in this uh, representative example. So this is, again, not the entire problem has not been solved. We don't even claim to do that. But these are some promising results to show that these ideas of spatiotemporal deep neural networks, when applied in the context of agility, uh, are meaningful. Here's another ex interesting example. So the predicted blue steering angle you see um, is the output of the network which was trained in the game itself. So the game has never seen any real data. But this footage is YouTube footage of Fernando Alonso, who's a Formula One driver. He's driving in Australia. So if you eyeball the blue prediction and the true steering, uh, you can see they are generally in agreement. We don't have ground truth values for YouTube footage. Uh, but they are generally in agreement. And we can draw two conclusions. One is that. The photorealism of the game is, uh, is actually very good, because you are learning something useful that can be transfer learned into the real world, and you're not learning garbage. 
And the other is that this is potentially a way to even label unannotated racing data sets, right? So you have th thousands of hours of racing videos online, uh, and we can use some of our networks to learn the ground truth and then apply the spatial temporal deep learning networks on top of that. So the, I'm very excited about this result in particular. So then, of course, we do a lot of racing, but we tie it back to commercial cars. So here's a commercial uh, simula uh, urban environment simulator called AirSim, and we, uh, we can do our end-to-end -end driving within this urban environment as well. Uh, so my students use uh, Unreal Engine to uh, uh, even create custom maps. So we can create our own custom freeways, or we can mimic any Google map and draw freeways on top of that. So here you'll see in a bit how uh, some of my students in the very early versions of this have programmed some uh, very exaggerated drunk drivers uh, to mess with our car, but we have to sort of you know, m make sure we don't uh, crash into them. So this was, uh, uh, in summary, a brief highlight of this whole idea of safety through agility. Uh, in my group, we use these uh, hardware called F1x10. In fact, this is something that I have started more than two years ago. This is a Formula 1x10 because it's one-tenth the scale. Uh, I even teach a course around this at UVA uh, about how do you learn to build, drive, and race these cars, which is really teaching you the pr principles of perception, planning, and control. And as you saw earlier, we use these test bits to also gather a lot of data to uh, help train uh, deep neural networks. So I have also been hosting an international F110 autonomous racing competition uh, for the past three years. We've had our races in Portugal and Italy uh, and in Pittsburgh. Our next race is going to be in Montreal. And so teams from all over the world, they learn how to, this, all of this is open source. So they, so they make their cars and they come and compete in this battle of algorithms on training the most agile cars. So uh, to conclude, I'll leave you with one final video of some highlights from our recent race in Italy. Can we have audio for this? So this is like a real F1 weekend. We have two days practice session and then the actual race. So here you see students are tuning their cars or debugging them. Uh, and every year, the baseline of competition becomes higher and higher. So a lot of teams use these sophisticated maps, which are very similar to what full-scale self-driving cars use today. So these were the participants this year. All right, maybe you can kill the audio, and that's my talk. That's my time. Feel free to drop me a line. That's my email ID. I'd love to collaborate, learn more about any of your interest in this space. There's a lot more we do in terms of security of autonomous vehicles, trust in machine learning as well, but uh, that's my time. I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks. Um, hi, very interesting work. Uh, can you explain a little bit uh, more how do you think you can label um, your unlabeled videos? Yeah, so I went over that quite fast. Uh, there are two ideas. So first is the reason why we are able to transfer learn from the game to the real world is because the camera perspective is the same, right? So the, I'm training on the same camera perspective images, which is the cameras above the driver's head. Uh, and that's the real life uh, TV broadcast camera as well. The other thing is, um, so one idea is to generate soft labels, which is train in the game and use that to label on data in the real world. Uh, and once you have the label, you can feed uh, this spatio-temporal network that I briefly described. But the other idea is, since the camera perspective is the same, there are some rigid features on the body of the F1 car, some vertical stabilizers, and the steering wheel itself is a very detectable edge. So even you don't need a neural network for that. You can even use uh, traditional computer vision to look at how the steering angle moves relative to this uh, vertical uh, frame of reference. So yeah. All right, well, thank you again. Thanks. <laughs>